Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the webinar on strengthening substance use prevention in Tanzania through evidence-based interventions. Thank you for joining us. I am Radolf Norte, the Regional Coordinator for Africa, and I'll be moderating the session. So the topic seeks to highlight effective prevention strategies and discuss how global principles can be adapted to various local contexts, especially in Tanzania. Ordinarily, I would have provided an introduction to ISAP, but I'll tie that in with my presentation since I also happen to be a speaker. So the objectives for our discussion over the next 60 minutes would be to understand the significance of proactive preventive measures and their long-term impact on communities, to explore practical guidance on applying research-backed strategies within Tanzanian communities, and lastly, how organizations like ISAP can provide resources and training for professionals in the substance use prevention field. Allow me to welcome our speakers for today. Our first speaker would be Dr. Omari Obuguyu. He's the Assistant Director, Non-Communicable Diseases, Ministry of Health in Tanzania, and also a psychiatrist. Dr. Obuguyu has been working in the field of non-communicable diseases, including addiction and mental illness for many years. We also have Dr. Peter Infisi, Dr. Mfisi is a physician and the Commissioner for Prevention and Treatment, Drug Control and Enforcement Authority in Tanzania. He has been working in the field of prevention and treatment for more than five years, and he's the Chief Coordinator for programs relating to prevention and treatment in Tanzania. From ISOP Kenya on the panel today, we have Dr. Elizabeth Injani. Dr. Injani is a clinical psychologist with ICAP credentials. She's also a global master trainer on UTC and UPC. Dr. Injani is a specialist in mental health management with a bias in addiction management and has over 20 years in conducting trainings. She holds a PhD in clinical psychology. Lastly, <laughs> lastly, we have the Assistant Commissioner for Treatment and Rehabilitation at the Drug Control and Enforcement Authority in Tanzania. <laughs> and also as the chairperson of ISAP Tanzania, Dr. Kassian Nyandidi. I'll plead with you to please ensure that your microphones are on mute until we get to the Q&A session where you can ask a question or get involved live. So as you can see, we have well-seasoned and experienced speakers on board today. So honorable speakers, Dr. Nyandidi, Dr. Nfisi, Dr. Njani, and Dr. Obuguyu, it's a great pleasure to have you with us today. So I'd hand over now to Dr. Ubuguyu, who would be delivering the first presentation. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you, uh, Tim. Uh, is it okay that you can hear me well? Yes, Dr. Ubuguyu, we can hear you. Okay, so sorry, I don't have a PowerPoint, and I'm sorry, I have to be the first speaker. I know there's a lot of uh, data which will set up the ground, but unfortunately, I have other commitments and I have to uh, to leave before end of this uh, session today. So I'm so sorry for, for that. But however, I've spared some uh, few minutes to share with you uh, a little bit of uh, understanding on uh, our struggle against substance use, especially in Tanzania. Uh, Dr. Kassin will talk more on the uh, illicit substance use, but... Let me take you through the non-communicable disease platform uh, and portfolio. Uh, first, we had our state survey uh, in 2012 uh, as a Tanzanian mainland, and 2011 it was in Zanzibar. And back then, it was, uh, we were just looking at two uh, substances of interest. One is alcohol, and the second one is uh, tobacco. And those were just a means of understanding how uh, these two substances are, are affected as, as part of the risk factor for non-communicable disease. But we all know these are the simplest uh, drugs which are socially acceptable, and many are uh, introduced into substance use uh, via these two uh, socially accepted drugs. So in step uh, survey 2012, what we realized that it was, uh, there were 17% of, 14% uh, of Tanzanians who were using uh, tobacco, and almost 26% of Tanzanians were using alcohol. Uh, for alcohol use, uh, almost 25% of male, they are binge drinkers, and around 11% of uh, female were binge drinkers. But these are the people 
who added above 25 percent, uh, 25 years of age, to those who were 65 back then. Uh, this were our uh, study uh, sample set, uh, sample age groups. But in 2014, we did a global school-based health survey, and this is very key uh, when it comes to prevention of uh, uh, substance abuse. And what we realized is uh, that almost 4% of uh, adolescents, 13 to 17 years, uh, were using alcohol, and same number were using, I mean, same proportion, were using uh, tobacco, and almost 2%, 2.3% were using cannabis. And all of these age groups, uh, they debut for uh, uh, alcohol, for tobacco use, we are around 14 years of age because uh, overall, 89% of those youth under 14 years, uh, they started using uh, those substances at around 14 years when they were in grade seven and up to from two back in 2014. But this age at the moment, many of them are in secondary school. So it was very alarming at that, uh, at that moment. And at the ministry, uh, we have uh, to create some of the intervention targeting uh, school-based uh, preventive uh, measures. And through Minister of Health, we have Health Promotion Department, which is working in collaboration with the Minister of Education to have school-based uh, health prevention uh, programs. And many uh, are interventions which are incorporated within the school curriculum and some are in the policy. At the ministerial level, above all of those, we have health policy of uh, 2007. It is very old health policy, and most of this development came uh, after we are uh, having our policy. So we improvised by having our colleagues from uh, uh, DCA who has uh, latest laws and regulations, including some of the policy, who modify some of the issues which are not addressed in uh, in health policy. Generally, our 20, uh, 2007 health policy is a cross -cut, uh, has a cross-cutting policy recommendation. Uh, there are six policy recommendations for mental health and substance abuse. Two uh, of those six recommend policy recommendations are for substance use prevention, uh, care, and rehabilitation services. At, uh, we also have health sector strategic plan from uh, strategic plan one to five. Uh, we have mental health as a component within our strategy and it, it set clearly and give us some of the strategies on how to prevent uh, use of uh, uh, substances and better uh, intervene for those who have already uh, started using and those who have complications. Again, uh, on strategic implementation, we have all health facilities from the dispensary level. Uh, some are calling this the level four facility, health facility. They all provide uh, treatment for substance use disorder. And out of those uh, more than 7,000 facilities, the number of those who are diagnosed with a complication is very minimal. And the good proportion is from the uh, the ones who are attending methadone clinics. Uh, this enlightened to us that uh, our mental health clinics are not very well structured or strategically uh, designed to cut uh, for mental health, uh, I mean, for substance use disorder. Currently, we are reviewing our mental health strategy and we are planning to have uh, a standalone uh, clinics for substance abuse so that we can. Uh, it uh, saves more, more clients who are in need. Otherwise, uh, through health centers, dispensary and health uh, 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 and district hospital, we are conducting outreach and many are on the education, early detection and referral of those who are diagnosed to have uh, substance use disorder or those who wish to, uh, to go for the healthcare services. So in a nutshell, these are some of the strategies that Minister of Health are incorporated within uh, 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 substance use uh, prevention. Otherwise, we are the member of uh, National Drug Council, uh, where our minister is uh, part of the high-level uh, council where all the decisions related to 
uh, substance use prevention and care uh, is designed and DCA is the secretariat of that uh, high level uh, council. So thank you. And if there's any question, you can just ask me. Otherwise, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Ubugu for the insights into the landscape of drug demand reduction efforts in Tanzania. I'd wish to remind everyone that in case you have a question, please type it in the chat window. But if not, we'll have a Q&A session at the end where you'd be free to um, unmute yourself. So I'll proceed to the next presentation, which is on um, the ISAP resources and initiatives in Africa. And I'll plead that he permits me to share my screen for this presentation. Could you, could you confirm if my screen is visible? Yes, it is. We can see it. Yes, it oh. is. It's visible. Thank you. So when it comes to ISAP, ISAP basically is a network for anyone working within the field of drug demand reduction, be it a counselor, a social worker, or a um, psychiatrist. Once the person has a part to play in the field of drug demand reduction, we recognize the person as part and parcel of the network of ISAP. Now, what is our mission? Our mission is to ensure that the work of thousands of our members are as impactful, accessible, and effective as possible. So our goal here is to ensure that it's easier to discover and share evidence-based knowledge, best practice and training and networking opportunities. So for instance, with this conversation that we are having on this platform, it's circulated across the region and across the globe to ensure that in as much as it is situated, it is a Tanzanian discussion on what is happening in country. Other countries can also see what is happening, learn from them and also share best practices. So when it comes to our growth, we have over 40,000 members and you realize that the growth for Africa is growing quite fast. We have it growing at a rate of 32%. And this is significant and, in any, and also reinforces our need to strengthen efforts to, sorry, yeah, reinforces the need for us to come together and work harder at building prevention efforts. We have um, 10 chapters presently in Africa and Nash Tanzania, the Tanzania National Chapter is hosted by the Drug Control Enforcement Authority. So how does ISAP work? ISAP works in three main ways. That is the digital, which is usually mainly on our website, through our national chapters, and then through our events. So when it comes to the ISAP online, that's our digital platform, we want to make it easier for you to discover and share evidence-based knowledge, best practices, training and networking opportunities. When you go on our website, which is, has a free access to all resources, you realize that there are research articles, publications, uh, routine webinars. After every webinar, you can actually find the recording to re-watch it. And then the opportunities for networking and collaboration through the different groups that are created on the website. We also have information on training opportunities and membership levels to suit different career levels. Housed on this website also is our professional development section. So our professional development section through our partner agencies, such as um, Colombo Plan and ICGDL, you realize that there are different um, training opportunities, which may be instructor-led courses or self-led self courses in the UPC, the Universal Curriculum, the UPC, or the UTC. So we would actually encourage you to visit the site, look at these resources and sign up and build your knowledge along the way. The Knowledge Share tool is a different platform that enables you to share information. For instance, if you are a researcher in Tanzania and you've actually published an article within the field of drug demand reduction, you can actually log on to our Knowledge Share and share this to a global audience. Also, there's the same ways other people in different parts of the world are sharing knowledge on our Knowledge Share. So you realize that it creates a pool of different resources. When it comes to prevention alone, you realize that we all have over a thousand resources on prevention. So all these tie in to ensure that we are amplifying the work of our members and partners, such that wherever anyone is around the world, wherever they are located, 
whatever they are doing within the field is amplified and we, are, we have the opportunity to connect. Our national chapters is also a core way by which we work. We have 39 national chapters and uh, we currently have six in progress. But uh, what the national chapters do, as ISAP Tanzania is already doing, is to encourage national and regional collaboration amongst prevention, treatment, and harm reduction and recovery professionals. And what we are doing right now with this webinar is an example of what a national chapter actually does in country, serving as a focal point to share information and bring people together to one discussion table to discuss matters of pertinent interest in the field. So just a few ongoing activities across the continent. You realize that when it comes to trainings and conferences, different national chapters have been leading in um, as training providers, and then also um, with different conferences in different countries based on their field of work. We also have community advocacy led by different national chapters. Our webinars is also a highlight of our work. And uh, from 2020 to present, we've held 65 webinars led by national chapters in Africa. And this has accrued a participation of over 16,000 members. So recently we met in uh, Tanzania, Arusha. Um, I'd like to take advantage of the, to say thank you again to Dr. Cassian and his team for hosting us in Arusha to discuss what looks like a direction for Africa, what looks like a direction for the national chapters in Africa and what are our priorities. And then we um, finalized this based on four main pillars of work going forward, especially within the next year looking at youth engagement, how we can expand youth engagement, development and leadership in drug demand reduction. How can we ensure that there's in-country support for trainings and credentialing? And how can we also establish functional reporting mechanisms between us and our regional partners, such as African Union, such that we can draw um, more participation and resources to growth in Africa? And beyond that, how can we grow as a continent? So we are planning to do this within um, thematic structures of support, development, collaboration, networking, and overall impact. So this is an overview of that. And I would encourage that you connect with us, visit the website. And if for any reason you have one more clarity on anything, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. So I'll be handing over to the next speaker now. I know there may be some questions, but as I mentioned, please put that in the chat window or just note it down during the Q&A session. We'll have um, an open discussion where you can feel free to ask these questions. So I'll hand over now to Dr. Kassian Nyadindi, who will be, who'll be our next speaker. Yeah, thank you, Radolf, very much for your presentation. Uh, my name is Dr. Kassian Nyandindi. I'm the Assistant Commissioner uh, from the Drug Control and Enforcement uh, Authority of Tanzania in the Division of uh, Prevention and Treatment. And I'll take you through the overview of drug situation in Tanzania. I know I know a lot of you, you have the presentation and you can upload yes. and then I can proceed. Are you ready? Can I proceed? Uh, I think there's a little bit of a tech glitch. Okay, fine. I think we have it. Apologies. I think we are facing a little bit of a tech glitch, but we are working on it. Yeah, it's okay. As I said earlier, I'll be doing an overview of drug situation uh, in Tanzania, and my presentation will be covering uh, four key areas. Uh, we'll look at the country itself, its profile, and then what is the status of drug use in the country, uh, new trends of drug use, and what are the challenges we are facing and ways uh, forward. Um, I know you are still uploading it. So Tanzania, as it is, is the 10th uh, largest country in Africa and the fifth most populated. Uh, according to um, the size, we are 947,300 square kilometers. And our 2022 national census um, estimates um, we are 62 million, million Tanzanians. Uh, 
My country to the west is uh, bordered by Burundi, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, while on the northern side, we are bordered by the Kenyan and Ugandan neighbors. On the southern part, uh, we are bordered by Malawi, uh, Zambia, and Mozambique, while on the eastern part, we are bordered by the Indian uh, Ocean. And I would like to thank very much the ISAP Global and ISAP Africa because uh, last year in 28th November, uh, next slide, we managed to launch uh, officially the ISAP chapter for Tanzania. The chapter itself is anchored through the Drug Control and Enforcement Authority. And this is the government entity under the prime minister's office, which is responsible in all matters uh, related to addressing and countering our drug problem. And we have uh, the uh, supply reduction, demand reduction, and harm reduction services within the, the same authority. And we are also responsible for enhancement of international cooperation. So our ISAP chapter is headed uh, by the country uh, director, uh, who is the one who is speaking at the moment, but we have the general secretary and we have key four sections. We have the head of development and training, head of public relations, head of fund and organization, as well as head of students uh, and youth. The way how we have designed the Tanzanian chapter since it is anchored within the DCA and our country has got uh, five main zones. So in every zone of the country, there is one representative who oversees all the ISAP activities. So we have a representative from the Northern zone. We have another one from the Southern Highlands, uh, Central zone, Coastal zone, as well as, as local zones, as well as lake zones. So these are the key uh, strategic areas in terms of how uh, we are addressing uh, our ITAP activities uh, within the country. Next slide. Yeah. Now let us look at the drug situation in Tanzania. Uh, as far as uh, substance use is concerned in the country, we have a problem with uh, illicit substances as well as illicit uh, substances. The most consumed illicit uh, substance in the country is alcohol uh, followed by nicotine and caffeine. Uh, while on the other side, as we speak about the illicit drugs, uh, cannabis, is the one which is highly used, uh, followed by cut, uh, heroin, and cocaine. Mm -hmm. So these are the major uh, substance of use uh, in Tanzania at the moment. Next slide. Now, uh, for the past 10 years, we have started to see the new trends of drug use in the country, uh, particularly the misuse of hospital medications with narcotic and psychotropic effects. Uh, there is a high use of opioids, particularly tramadol and pethidine, but we also see the misuse of benzodiazepines, uh, mainly Valium and Lolazepam. And according to the current seizures in the country, we have seen uh, an influx of methamphetamine from Southwest uh, Asia, as well as the use of new psychoactive uh, substances. So these are the new threats which are happening in the country. Now, we as Tanzanians, we are facing uh, a number of challenges. Uh, the first one is our country lacks the national drug observatory system and early warning system, which could try to depict the way how our uh, drug problem is trending at the moment. And the second thing we have uh, inadequate capacity building to service uh, providers especially in the area of uh, prevention uh, and treatment. And the emergence of new threats, the ones I've mentioned before, the new psychoactive substances, uh, methamphetamines, uh, as well as the misuse of hospital medications with narcotic and psychotropic effects, uh, poses uh, a new threats to, to our efforts.
And the way how services are structured in the country, we we have not been able to reach uh, all key areas, especially in the area of uh, prevention, as well as the area of treatment. And when we look at a global picture, we see there is a lack of regional and continental drug control uh, platforms. We feel like this is an area where much more emphasis is need to be put in terms of um, uh, enhancing uh, cooperation in order to address and counter a drug, a drug problem. So we as a country, we are looking forward towards establishment of the National Drug Observatory System, uh, trying to build more capacity to our people in the area of uh, prevention and treatment, particularly through the use of evidence-based interventions. And we are very thankful to uh, Colombo Plan as well as uh, ISAP for bringing the training of UPC in the country through which uh, 29 TOTs have been trained to train other people uh, on drug prevention. And we are planning to conduct more in-depth research and uh, and surveys to see what is the trend of uh, drug situation in the country. And it is our belief that uh, continuous strengthening of regional and international uh, cooperation is very important uh, in uh, issues of uh, training our professionals, particularly in the area of prevention and area of treatment. So in a nutshell, uh, that is the situation of Tanzania as far as the drug use is concerned. So thank you very much for your time. And I'm looking forward uh, for further questions from the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kassian. Um, I think we can check the chat window now to see if there are any questions. But we move to the next speaker. Okay, so I don't see any questions at the moment. So I'll hand over to Dr. Peter Infisi, who would give us the next presentation. Okay, so I think Dr. Infisi has not been able to connect yet. So um, Dr. Njani? if you could do as the honest. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Jani from Kenya. Allow me to share my, my presentation. Is it visible from your side? Is Dr. Njani, yes. is this? Yeah. Yes, it Thank is. you. Uh, I have been requested to talk about integrating evidence-based interventions in Tanzanian context, and I'll take you through a few of the, of the slides that I have. And we looked at uh, one key issue, what prevention is, and we are seeing it is the application of prevention science to address the health and safety of individuals through improving socialization and socialization processes to enhance self-realization and participation in the society. And when we talk about socialization, uh, we are talking about a process and the socialization agents that uh, come together with it. So as we move on, we shall be able to see these agents. Then when we look at the EBPs, we are saying that they are, it is the use of systematic decision-making processes or provisions of services which have been shown through available scientific evidence to consistently improve measurable client outcomes. And here we are not talking about the ones that we do at, uh, as individuals. We are talking about those ones that have gone through research, tested for efficiency and efficacy. And instead of gut reaction, uh, or SIGO observation as the basis of decision making, EBP will rely on data collected through experimental research and accounts for individual client characteristic and clinician expertise. Uh, 
In relation to that, we are asking ourselves why is substance use prevention important? And we are looking at the general aim of prevention, and we are saying uh, that it is for the healthy and safe development of children and youth to realize their potential and become contributing members of their community and the society. That is now when we focus on Tanzania, the Tanzanian community, and the primary objective is to help people, particularly the young people, avoid or delay initiation of the use of substance, or if they have started already to avoid developing substance use disorders like dependency. The other key question is what we ask ourselves is, what is required for TZ to adapt EBIs? And just like any other country in the world, we are saying that for us to employ EBIs, you must be able to respond to the following key questions. Uh, when you respond to this, then you can be able to have the way forward. What is the problem in your country? Like what Dr. Cassian and uh, Dr. Bugu has talked about, which population is affected and by which substances? What has been done before? What worked that time or did not work? What do we need to change or do differently, if any, uh, in terms of the services offered and in terms of this human capital? And then the last one is, what do we retain in terms of services uh, and human capital? Again, one of the things that we can do in Tanzania is to do surveys, to use the surveys results that you have. This will describe the substance use problem for example, the incidences and the prevalence. Uh, it will provide data on the drug problem, like which substances are the major problem, who is using them in terms of age and gender, is use increasing or decreasing over what period of time, where is this happening? And this we are talking about your geographical area uh, in your country according to your regions. Then you identify the risk and protective factors for the population that is affected. Then the other uh, step is to identify range of users. And we are saying that in any population, we will get these types of users. One is the non-users. We call them, the, they are those who are resolute non-users who have decided never to use substances. They are those who are vulnerable non-users. They could not be using, but they are maybe in an environment that is uh, making them more vulnerable. Then there are initial users with the potential to progress to abuse and substance use disorders. And we have those who are already using and may or may not be experiencing the consequences of their use. And such a range in substance use patterns requires a range of intervention. So you cannot use one for all of them. The next one step is to identify the point of intervention. And uh, when I looked at this example, I I was able to add this, sorry. Uh, the one in red is where we are talking about the non-users. And you find that in many cases, the non-users are ignored. But because of the ones we said, the vulnerable non-users, we have this green arrow that will help uh, take us to the initial use. And we have that. Uh, sign there that you can intervene before they get to their initial use. You can intervene at the initial use where they either discontinue using or they can progress and continue the use. And you can intervene before they progress to continued use. Here you address the frequency, the multiple substances used, and the varied administration method. Then they may pro progress to develop problems. Therefore, this is another point of intervention that you can take. And uh, uh, here you, uh, you help them before they develop problem health problems like dependency, uh, infections, chronic problems, mortality, emotional and psychological and social problems. And then there are those who will not continue uh, because they have no problem. Then again, we look at where do we uh, uh, intervene, and we say that we are a product of our environment, our socializing agencies, the micro, the macro, 
uh, levels, the, those agents within the macro and the micro, when they interact with the personal characteristics, they influence our beliefs and attitudes and behaviors towards substance use. And here, when we are talking about the, the mac micro, we are talking about the family, the peers, the school, the face-based organization and others. And the macro, we are looking at the social and cultural and economic poverty and physical uh, settings. And then we are looking at the interaction between each. This interaction is very, very key, and we need to address it as people who are working in prevention. Again, now when we look at this, it is the same slide, but we are looking at where we are intervening. Personal characteristic, the interaction between the micro and the personal characteristic, the macro and the personal characteristic, and the micro. And then again, when you look at this, you are focusing on the change of beliefs, attitude, and behaviors. Then when you do that, you identify and adapt prevention interventions and policies that will meet your targeted population, your targeted behavior. And the key questions here to ask is who is affected? That is a target population in terms again of age, gender and others. What is the problem in terms of substances? We have had those substances that are illicit and illicit. What is the expected outcome? For example, what behavior are you targeting in the population? And then you identify an EBI specific for that population and targeting that particular behavior because all EBIs are not effective for all populations and for all behaviors. And here you can rely on the EBI registries that you have been given during your trainings. Then do you have the resources to implement the EBI in terms of human resources and financial resources so that you, if you don't have the human you start doing capacity building if you don't have financial you start uh, lobbying for funds to be able to meet that the next one is look at the prevention interventions uh the policies to address the malleable factors that promote positive development that reduce negative behaviors and these are the protective and risk factors that you ought to address then again, under the interventions, you look at the target population that you have. Do you use a target the universal population that is everybody who is in your country, selective for known groups who are at risk, like children of drug users, or are you going to use the indicated population? These are the individuals who have already who already use drugs but are not yet dependent on it. The other one is to ask yourself, why would you be targeting risk and protective factors? And we say that the risk factors contribute to the initiation, the maintenance, and escalation of substance use. So as much as we want to do prevention, we must identify if it is the children, what are their risk factors, how the protective factors help in reducing the chances of initiation to substances. And then these factors can be identified and addressed at the level of individual, the family, the school, and the community. And this is giving us the setting where you can be able to do that. Again, when you identify the populations, you are able to look at the, where the services can be offered, whether you are going to take prevention for those populations we have said, whether you are going to do treatment and whether you are going to be maintenance. And this is where the issue of recovery and aftercare comes in. And each has got its EBIs that you can be able to use. Then the categories of prevention, we have talked about this one, the universal, the selective, and the indicated, which are very, very crucial for us. And uh, for us as service providers, especially those who are working in prevention, it is very, very crucial to have in mind these populations because they dictate our kind of programs, our kind of policies, and the group that we are going to focus on. And then the key question is, we have heard all this, we have heard from the other speakers, what can we do to make Tanzania different in terms of substance use, knowing the, the prevalence and the incidences that are there, what are we, can we do? What kind of a picture of Tanzania do we want to see as Tanzanians? As a, What kind of a picture do we want Tanzania to represent in a global field?
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ijani, for the great presentation. I have noticed that there are, there are some questions in the chat box, but for us to have some continuity in the discussion, I would move over to Dr. Ifisi's presentation. But right after, we would have a question and answer session and all your questions will be addressed. And for those that are requ um, requested for the slides, yes, um, I'm sure the speaker will be happy to share them after that. Dr. Ifisi. Hello, good morning, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Dr. Pat Peter Patrick Infisi. I'm working with the Drug Control and Enforcement Authority as a Commissioner for Prevention, Treatment and Rehabilitation. Thank you very much for good presentations which has been, have been presented by the previous presenters. On my side, I'm, I have been given a role of, of discussing the role of DCA on supporting preventive uh, intervention. Uh, to start with, of course, the country profile has already been said by Dr. Nyandindi, Dr. Kassian, uh, but I'll just introduce what DCA is. This, the Drug Control and Enforcement Authority is a government institution under the Prime Minister's office. This was established in 2017, and the aim of establishing this uh, institution was to strengthen the war in drugs uh, in the country. The law of DCA is to implement, coordinate, and support all activities geared to combating drug problem in the country. And these, these activities sometimes are being implemented by various stakeholders. Uh, so DCA coordinates the support I mean, it coordinates and supports the implementation of evidence-based prevention interventions implemented by various stakeholders. Uh, what are these uh, preventive, preventive interventions? Uh, this is uh, the use of uh, evidence-based evidence prevention programs that are designed to prevent uh, substance use and related uh, negative outcomes. Uh, most of these uh, strategies are designed to be in a specific settings to specific age groups and to specific populations. And the preventions are aimed to either reduce risk factors and enhance the protective factors to help people avoid or delay the onset of drug use or stop substance use from, I mean, uh, progressing into higher risk substance use or substance use disorders. They also uh, reduce harm reduction related to substance use and, also, and misuse, and also such as uh, infections or injuries and also maybe sudden death due to drug overdose. Uh, the DCA law in supporting these uh, preventive measures, uh, preventive interventions, as, as we said earlier, uh, the, the, the DCA is the only institution in the country which coordinates uh, the development of, of the, de the development of strategies, plans, guidelines, and also standards for drug use intervention, treatment, and rehabilitation services. DCA also regulate the co the, and coordinate. It also supports uh, and establish drug use, prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and social reintegration programs for people who use drugs. Finally, DCA also advocates for the utilization of treatment and also rehabilitation services among people who use drugs and their families. Uh, in, in so doing, DCA uh, has developed some, uh, some, DCA has, oh, in so doing, DCA has developed some, some national guidelines for drug prevention. These are, the, the first one was developed about three years ago, and this was aimed in the total, I mean, the, the general population, where all the prevention interventions are, 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 are be, has been in, described and and then we use it in uh, giving education to the society but the the other one is is developed specifically for the school 
I mean, for, for schools interventions where we have some some we have some clubs in the schools, the anti-drug clubs, which use this manual to 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 for for for, for, for giving education to these children from secondary school, primary school, and some colleges. Uh, the prevention strategies programs in, in the country, we have also, we coordinate, we collaborate with the other stakeholders in the country to make sure that uh, we, we have a better, better, better explanation or better understanding to our community. We also support, support the vulnerable groups, uh, such as those who are especially street children, uh, people at risk, including young people, individuals with drug use disorders and those uh, in marginalized communities, providing them with the tools and support they need to, to stay drug free. We also uh, give awareness, we have awareness campaigns to, 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 to using media, particularly the, 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 I mean, we use media like radios, televisions uh, to give awareness to people on the effect of drugs. Also, we have uh, programs for capacity building, particularly the healthcare workers, uh, I mean, those for the CSOs which are dealing with uh, people who use drugs. We also give cap with capacity to these people. So, as I said earlier, we, we have established some anti-drug clubs in schools so far. Uh, we have about 15,186 clubs which have been established in Tanzania. Uh, these are in primary schools, in secondary schools, and as well as colleges and higher learning institutions. Uh, these are some of the pictures which shows the capacity buildings, the mass, aware, mass campaign awareness to the public, to the law enforcement, to make sure that this problem is being dealt uh, clearly. And in conclusion, uh, substance use prevention is a, is a, a corrective responsibility that require, requires much, I mean, a much secret, secretarial approach. DCN remain committed to protecting our community and promoting a health I mean, a healthier future for all people who are using drugs and by using the evidence-based uh, practices. Uh, evidence-based interventions for substance use do not only help individuals to remain productive and um, productive members of their society, but also help to save society, society to society's money in the medical costs after the people have developed drug use disorders. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Ifisi. So I think now we can move into a question and answer session. So um, Dr. Ifisi, Dr. Njani, and Dr. Kassian, let's start with the questions in the chat window now. I think the first question was uh, from, forgive me if I have the name pronunciation wrong. Saidi was asking if community peers are part of training. Um, I don't know if the training efforts in Tanzania. Yeah. Randolph. Hi, Dr. Kassian. Yeah, can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, it's true. Uh, communities are part of the substance use training in Tanzania and we as Tanzanians uh, through the division of prevention and treatment we are working very closely with different uh, communities in terms of training. I know my boss Dr. Mfesi mentioned about the guideline which the country has and that guideline is uh, very broad and even community members are being trained but we are also working so closely with the CSOs and we train them on different uh, uh, programs. 
And at the moment, we have launched the ISAP chapter in Tanzania. We know we'll be having, not we'll be having, we already have the UTC program in Tanzania for treatment. And we have the UPC for prevention. I know also community members are uh, warmly welcomed to participate in the prevention programs, but we are also looking forward to work closely with um, uh, Colombo Plan and ISAP to bring around the recovery program for the recovery drug users. And Saidi and some other members have been trained on recovery, so they need to understand like community is part and parcel of this program and we cannot uh, do away without the community. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cassia. If for any reason anyone has any reaction to an answer, please feel free to show your hand on the screen and we can hand over to you. The next question was from Edward. How are we addressing alcohol as a threat right now in our country, as we have seen it as one of the leading problems now? So any of our speakers, yeah, Dr. Cassia. Yeah, uh, in my presentation, I said earlier, the most uh, drug which is highly used in the country is alcohol and we are addressing it. DCA is very much uh, responsible in uh, preparing all training uh, materials for drug prevention, but we are also responsible in coordinating some treatment programs. So as we go out, uh, to train the community about uh, drug prevention, alcohol is one of the issues we are taking on board. And we are, we are trying our best to, to, to train the community to understand, uh, especially the delay in initi initiation, but also we are, we are, we are training them uh, about uh, prevention programs in school so that kids are not uh, indulged into alcohol use. But for those people with alcohol use disorders, we have uh, different uh, programs in terms of how we address to them by providing uh, treatment programs. We have uh, treatment programs in our mental health units, whereby apart from mental health, the issue of substance use is being addressed within those uh, centers. But we also have the recovery homes, which treat people for different substance use disorders uh, including uh, alcohol use. And we have specific programs for people with specific needs, uh, especially those who have uh, opioid use. We have the methadone program, but our methadone program are designed in such a way that they don't only address the opioid use, but they also address concurrent use of other substances, including uh, alcohol use. So as far as the Tanzanian uh, context is concerned, that is how we have been doing so far, but we are happy and very much delighted to let other people understand that at the moment, we have professionals who have been trained on universal prevention curriculum, whereby the issue of alcohol is incorporated. And the plan is for those members who are the TOTs to go and train other people so that they understand the same subject and the issue of alcohol is also incorporated in part of our trainings. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kassi. Sorry, Rado, I can add on what Dr. Nyadine has already said. Uh, right. So in addition to what we are implementing at the moment, again, we have uh, legislation that is tackling uh, alcohol issues. And fortunately, this is not anchored within the Ministry of Health or DCA. It is within the local government because 80, 75 to 80% of our alcohol, they are local blues. So the local government is the one which develop community to community because are different. So the bylaws are made locally and at the ministerial level, now we are reviewing the alcohol policy it uh, established and then now we are developing a standalone alcohol policy because most of the interventions needs a uh, uh, fiscal and regulatory intervention rather than a training because of the accessibility uh, issues and alcohol is within our traditions. Okay. 
Thank you, Dr. Buguyu. I think there are some reactions to this particular conversation. So um, I, I can see Saidi. Saidi, I see your hand up. Do you want to do you want to ask a follow up question to this specific question? Yes, my brother. Yes, my brother. Uh, thank you very much, Aisa, for Dr. Fisi, Dr. Buguyu, and Dr. Tazan. You always supporting us. Me, I'm just speaking in behalf of the community. I think we meet in Greece and Solani. And the curriculum, there is a number of curriculum. I don't know, you can correct me. How many curriculum do we have? And my question is coming to Drug Control Enforcement Authority. In those curriculum, according to the number, like me, I had the opportunity to a peer recovering professional. So do we have a plan to train a peer recovering professional in my site? But I know there is a lot of curriculum you 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 was learning in ISAP. So I want to know the number of curriculum we have and how we are going to plan for those curriculum to be used in Tanzania out of to use it, such let's say one or two curriculum. Better to use both of them so the understanding of a drug problem, treatment and evidence based it can be in good impact for our country. But all in all, we think our government they always tend to to hand to us, but my question is how number of curriculum we had as the ISAP and how we plan to inter implementing training for all curriculum according for the peer group. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you, Saidi. So uh, because of connectivity challenges, I will encourage that as much as possible, we can put the questions in the text so that um, the speakers are able to hear, see it and also hear it clearly. I don't, uh, Dr. Katian, do you have any other um, remark before we move to the next question? Yeah, uh, mine, it was like someone wrote a question about I know what Said has already said, but I, I know there are quite a number of curriculums. It depends with the need. Um, I'm not very much precise in terms of what uh, Colombo plan can offer so far, but if you go to the ISAP website, there is a specific area on something to do with development. And then from there, you can see there are quite a number of um, curriculum of your interest, you can go and do it. It depends with what you want. So I would like very much to encourage guys to go to the ISAP website. And if you see at the at the bullet where it is talks about uh, professional development, there are quite a number of, of trainings of your interest. So you can just go and do it. So it's not like everything the government need to do for you, but sometimes you can have your own uh, developmental career. But as far as DCA and ISAP Tanzanian chapter is concerned, whenever we have any type of training, we will put it um, in public and people can apply and those who qualify uh, will go for that training. At the moment, we started with the UPC core uh, and the minimum entry to that uh, cause was people to have a degree of uh, at least a minimum a degree. I know some people did not qualify for that. And there are some further advanced cause which are also also coming. So or once again, I encourage people to go through the to go through the the, the website, the ISAP website, and you can access quite a lot of information, a lot of uh, materials which will be very helpful for us in terms of addressing issues of prevention, issues of treatment, but as well as issues of recovery uh, from Colombo plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Garcia. I think we had one question here for um, Dr. Njani. Someone was asking about, seems to have missed the question. I have got it. Oh, you got it, super. I got it, it is talking about points of intervention. But before I respond to the point of intervention, can I uh, also add to what Dr. Cassian is to address our brother who is asking about um, those, th those trainings 
uh, he is calling them the peer recovery curriculum, which are in English, but the people on the ground are, uh, they, they understand Swahili. It becomes the owners of, of, the, of the trainer to translate that to that language that they can understand. Because if you're working within the community, you use the language that the community can understand. There are technical terms that you cannot translate into Swahili, but there are those that you can be able to explain in Swahili and they can be, be of much, much help. And that is what we are also doing in Kenya. Those people who cannot understand English, can we be able to do it in Swahili? And you get a person who is speaking, who is conversant in speaking Swahili. The other one is uh, now my point points of intervention, I'm talking about the areas where you implement an evidence-based prevention intervention or a point at which you start addressing drugs before the person gets initiated or before they get into problematic use. And I want to give an example of what Dr. Cassian said uh, in his presentation that uh, in the terms of drugs use, the age of initiation is 14 years. And in prevention, we say target two years below the age of initiation. So if you take two, uh, 12 years, this person is already in school. This is either in primary school and they are within the families. So your settings for intervention will be family and schools. So you look for those two programs that will address issues in the schools, issues in the family. And the intervention is to work, to look at the behavior that you want. Is it to delay initiation or targeting the person to stop. So you are beha the behavior of the individual will let you know. There's also another comment there in the in the chat, whether they can use indigenous method. Why are we professionalizing the field? So that we stop using our gut reaction, what we think works, yet it has not been tested. We don't want to throw away these people who are doing that, but we want to train and have a, a pool of people who are trained to use evidence-based practices. For example, sensitization and awareness is, part, is an activity and not a program. We go to a school, we give a talk on alcohol. The question is, whom are you targeting the whole school the lower primary, the mid primary, or the upper primary? What is the problem that you have identified? So when you look at all these scientific things, it is to help you up your game and be a better service provider. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Njani. Um, I think we also have from Juma, if there's a current survey conducted by the Ministry of Health on issues relating to substance abuse, and mental health and how long is the mental health strategy review being conducted any reaction from our speakers can you, can you repeat the question is there a current survey conducted by the Ministry of Health on issues relating to substance abuse and mental health? And how long is the mental health strategy review being conducted? Dr. Omar, are you around? Uh, I'm sure Dr. Omar would have been the right person to respond to the question. But as far as the um, the the substance use is concerned in the country, I know uh, our Tanzanian National AIDS and Control Program did a survey in 2019, but the results were not out because uh, I mean certain parameters were not very clear. So I know something else is being planned to be conducted. So I don't have the details about the mental health, 
but since uh, Dr. Omar is from mental health, he would have been the right person to respond to it. And during his presentation, he said he had some other commitments. I tried to call him and he was not available. Maybe he's committed to it. Otherwise, um, the guy who asked for that question, uh, will try to get his contact and we will send him the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we can take the last two questions just to ensure that we stay within the time frame. And as Dr. Carson has mentioned, all other follow-up questions will be addressed just in case we do skip a question in the chat. So from Anthony to um, this is addressed to both Dr. Mifisi and Dr. Nadindi. We have uh, to Dr. Mifisi, what's the strategic plan to ensure that the existing treatment facilities execute evidence-based approaches on the services rendered to the people with SUD? And to Dr. Nyajindi, what's the channel of communication in regards to the ISO Tanzania chapter? Dr. Amfisi? <laughs> I don't hear him, but I'll try to respond to the questions. Uh, first of all, the line of communication. I say area, the Tanzanian ISAP chapter is anchored through the Drug Control and Enforcement Authority. And I'm the, um, I'm the director on Tanzania. I shared with you the organogram on how we operate. So at the moment, guys, uh, feel free to contact us. My number is there. Uh, my number is 0712404692, but we have a formal communication. If you go through the website, you Google for ISAP Tanzania, and then you'll get all the, the information. But I encourage you once again to make use of the website in terms of going through uh, what is available, and there is a lot more uh, to use uh, through the ISAP website. There is a lot of information, a lot of materials, a lot of opportunities for you guys to make use of them. Now, the, 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 the second thing was addressed to Dr. Mfisi. Since um, he's deputy, I tried to call him and maybe he's not around. The issue was what's the strategic plan to ensure, to ensure, I mean, the question was what's the strategic plan to ensure that the existing treatment facilities execute evidence-based approaches on the services rendered to the people with substance use. Now, uh, it's very important to know that Tanzania was very much ahead in terms of offering uh, treatment programs in the country through evidence-based practice. And we started to train our service providers uh, since uh, 2016 uh, using the Colombo Prime materials. And we adopted the Colombo Prime materials in our own uh, settings we made them in such a way that to fit our service providers. And we are using uh, similar materials to, um, to establish our own curriculum. We have different curriculums to train different professionals, uh, including those who are offering um, MAT services at our MAT sites, but even other professional in the health uh, fields. Apart from training them, we are routinely doing the ongoing supportive uh, supervision to, to our sites. And very soon we will be credentialing those individuals who have attained a certain level of uh, excellences. At the moment, we are still using um, our certification from Colombo Plan, but as we go further, we'll try to tailor them to meet uh, the needs of the, the local professionals in Tanzanian uh, settings. So that is the situation as far as um, training uh, individuals on treatment programs is concerned uh, in Tanzanian settings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nadindi. So at this point, as we get to the... Um, as we are at the end of the webinar, I'll just ask if our speakers have any closing remarks or reaction to anything before we finally conclude. Okay. 
So since I'm not getting any reaction from our speakers, I'd want to say thank you very much once again to our cherished speakers, Dr. Jajindi, Dr. Mfisi, Dr. Njani, and Dr. Obuguyu. I know you took time out of your very heavy schedule to be able to uh, moderate this discussion with us. I'd want to also say thank you to each and every one of you for joining this presentation. It was a pleasure to have you with us. So this concludes the webinar and um, within 24 to 48 hours, you'd have a link to view a recording of today's webinar. We always appreciate your feedback and suggestions. So there'll be a follow-up email if for any reason you have any comments or you have any recommendation for future webinars, please feel free to reach out to any of us. On behalf of ISOP and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Great meeting.